Thank you, Member. Uh, member for Gosnells. Uh, thank you, Mr. Acting Speaker. I rise to speak to this motion and give it my full support. Section 18C of the Racial Discrimination Act 1975 should not be removed. We shouldn't see any weakening of our legislation that protects people from prejudice, from injustice, from all kinds of offensive attack. Instead, Mr Acting Speaker, we should be seeing a strengthening of those laws that help preserve the dignity that people are entitled to, which is actually the dignity that should exist in our community. Mr Acting Speaker, there are those who live in our community who seek to profit from ignorance and fear. They seek to build up ignorance and fear in the community. They put out messages describing in the most disgraceful terms particular groups. Unfortunately, our legislation doesn't protect us adequately from those groups, from those vile attacks. And I refer to YouTube clips that you can see that have been on YouTube only for a matter of weeks, put out by a group known as the Australian Defence League, an extreme right-wing group. A disgraceful attack, and it was the subject of a uh, ABC 730 report, a disgraceful attack by the ADL, as it likes to be known, by someone who purported to be an ex-soldier who claimed to be the leader of the group. And I do note in passing that I've not heard from the Australian Defence Force any denunciation of its connection because this, this person claiming to be ex-military was saying that uh, he actually had the support of people within the Defence Force for his vile attacks on Muslim people. Mr Acting Speaker, there is no room for that kind of divisive behaviour in our community. Now, I represent an area that is multicultural and gloriously so. It's becoming increasingly multicultural. It's one of our great strengths. And I'm very proud of the level of harmony that we've got. I think we can do better in terms of people moving from a position of tolerance to a position of respect and actually embracing those other cultures. And we're well on the way to doing that. It's really exciting. It's a tremendous example. And I'm sure it happens in many other communities across Western Australia. But we need to continue that. And I am very fearful that attacks from groups like the Q Society, another group who've actually started letterboxing in my electorate, the Q Society, who put out a vile piece of uh, pamphlet material, turned up in a letterbox in one of my constituents, at one of my constituents' addresses, and it says, it's time to say no. No to the multi-million dollar halal food industry. No to incorporating whitewashed Islamic content in our state schools. No to Sharia finance. No to segregation and apartheid, suggesting that these are traits of the Muslim faith. This is disgraceful. But the Q Society, and I understand that its president now, although the postal address given here is a Victorian one, that it now has a West Australian president. Mr Acting Speaker, these are disgraceful things. We should not be tolerating them. And more to the point, we should have legislation that makes their publication, whether through pamphlet, letterbox drop or through YouTube clip, we should have legislation that prohibits it, that makes it illegal. And it's for that reason that I fully support this motion and call upon the Barnett government to put in a submission to the Federal Attorney-General. And I think we need to go further at our state level as well. We need to look at amending the criminal code, where we do have provisions for racial vilification, but we need to extend that to include religious vilification. Now, I have many great faiths represented in my electorate. All three of the great Abrahamic faiths are well represented. We have numerous Christian churches, we have Jewish faith well represented, and we have the Islamic faith well represented. We have Hindus, Sikhs, we have many other smaller faiths as well. At their heart, those religions, they preach good. They talk about the good in humanity. They encourage that. So it is completely wrong that we should have any offensive material put out 
that seeks to, to attack these people. It's completely wrong. There's another reason, and this is almost a reason of self-interest, why we shouldn't be allowing these kinds of attacks. And I refer again to the ADL attack on YouTube. We shouldn't be having that because actually it gives rise to the very sort of climate, the very sort of thinking that could see us face things like Islamic extremism. If you're a young person who's just seen this vile attack on your faith, there's numerous ways you can react. If you're of strong stuff, you can perhaps block it out and ignore it. But I think it would be quite natural for someone to want to respond to the sorts of disgusting content that's in that YouTube clip put out by the ADL. But if someone wanted to respond, how would they respond? Through argument? I'd hope so. But there would be for some people, some people who's perhaps, uh, who don't receive the necessary education and assistance to, to think through the consequences of their actions, I think there could be that temptation for them to look towards extremism. This is a, a point that former UK Prime Minister Tony Blair talks about. He's fearful of the rise of Islamic extremism. It's by marginalising groups, such a, in the manner that the Q Society and the ADL do, it's that marginalisation process that will lead to the rise of extremism. And that's why we need legislation that's going to counter that kind of aggressive, nasty attack that panders to ignorance and fear, that makes people who probably in their day-to-day -day lives have had very little uh, in the way of an encounter with um, people of different faiths. They've got no experience. But they see this clip and they hear these nasty messages and they think, oh, well, that must be true and I'll go along and support that guy. That's actually the problem that the United Kingdom, to return to the United Kingdom and the comments of current Prime Minister David Cameron, who describes the United Kingdom Independence Party as a bunch of fruitcakes, loonies and closet racists. It's that kind of message that they're putting out there, that you, you might not know much about Europeans or you might not know much about people from uh, the, uh, the subcontinent or elsewhere in the world, but you should be fearful of them. Pandering to ignorance and fear. That's what these people thrive on. And it's, it's something that we have to guard against. We must counter every step of the way. So, Mr Acting Speaker, I support this legislation because it calls on the government to, to act, just as the New South Wales State Government and the Victorian State Government acted. They saw that it was in the best interests of their communities to make submissions to the federal government about this repeal of Section 18C of the Racial Discrimination Act. Why didn't Western Australia do the same? I can only conclude, Mr Acting Speaker, that those opposite didn't understand, don't appreciate or don't care about the significance of what that repeal of Section 18C would mean. That's a disgraceful situation, Mr Acting Speaker. We need good protection laws. We don't need any weakening of this legislation at all. Now, I touched on the issue of our state legislation especially in relation to protection of uh, people's religious convictions. And I do note that we did have a conviction under Section 80B, under Section 80B of the Criminal Code in relation to someone who made offensive remarks about Jewish people and described someone as a racist Jew. And I understand that that person was prosecuted un under Section 80B. Now, the terminology, though, was significant because the person described someone else as being a racist Jew. So I understand that there the criminal code was used because it allowed for this racial aspect. Whereas, uh, unfortunately, if someone's attack is merely on the basis of their religious faith, that then our state laws would not be adequate. So, Mr Acting Speaker, we do need to look at modifying our criminal code so that the racial vilification provisions, that they are extended to include religious vilification as well. Mr Acting Speaker, I um, will conclude, conclude my remarks, but um, I, I do think it's, 
It's dreadful when people are made to feel that they're not accepted in the communities that they live in, that they call home, that they're born into. Uh, it is completely wrong when people are told such vile things as to go home. They're born here, they live here, they're a part of this society, as if they could magically go somewhere else. This is offensive stuff. And uh, I do note as well the transition or this tendency in Australian society, it's perhaps not peculiar to Australian society, to kick the latest arrivals, to not the latest arrivals. And I'm thinking my course of my school education, I recall Italian people, as has been said, I recall Italian people being spoken to in offensive terms. And then it seemed to, that in my education in the 70s, but by the late 70s and early 80s, it had transitioned into attacks on Asian people. Now, I hear a lot, I don't hear attacks on Asian people so much these days, I think they do still exist. But um, there was this transition. But now it's people who are of Muslim faith who are attacked. So, Mr. Acting Speaker, we seem to have this tendency to want to kick those who are at their most vulnerable because they are newly arrived. They're going through all those challenges that a group that's recently arrived in the country has to face. All those difficulties that we learn about when we go to things like citizenship ceremonies and we, we speak to the people who have been here just long enough to qualify and they're, they're delighted to be becoming Australian citizens and you realise their stories, they've come from perhaps war-torn countries or perhaps they've just come here because they wanted to have a better life for themselves and their families and they find that they've had to separate from family, leave uh, close relatives and friends behind and then there's all the challenges of finding a new job and finding homes and finding schools finding their way in a new country, those enormous challenges that people face. And yet, they're the ones, those newly arrived people, they're the ones who are the most vulnerable to these kinds of attacks. So, Mr Acting Speaker, there's much, much work to be done in this area of preventing racial vilification and religious vilification in our community. And it's a challenge that we in this parliament must take up. Thank you, Member. Thank you, Member.